Hello and welcome back to the port, I'm the Gap Major and this is a let's play in the German Tier 5 Carrier Visor. Now, first of all, uh, just going to get the autopilot sorted, so I'm going to push over to the left flank I think, because usually the left flank is where it all starts kicking off. On the enemy team we have a Fabuki in the division with the Grass, we have a Pensacola York, Bayern, Normandy, KG5, Colorado Visor, game of domination on Sleeping Giant. First squadron to launch, going to go with those torpedo aircraft. So, the reason why I've picked the uh, visor for a let's play is um, it's not tier 3, so it's not seal clubbing, and it's not tier 7. Uh, I find the tier 7 is a little bit overpowered, um, and so I found that the, the tier 5 is probably the slightly more difficult one, um, simply because you usually get up tier uh, against tier 6s, which is where our anti aircraft capabilities of certain ships really starts to kick off, and then. Um, it's one of those really weird tiers where you can end up with really strange games. So being I'm going to work on the left flank, I want to know what I'm dealing with and how much available DPM or ships I can damage. Let's see, we've got the Bayern and the KG-5 there. And we have the York there, so let's see if we can force the broadside of the York. Don't think I can bounce it onto the DeGrasse and T sixty one. Actually, I might be able to just bounce it onto the DeGrasse unsuspectingly. We might just catch the uh, DeGrasse out because he's probably thought I dropped on the York. There we go, very nice. Oh, that's cheeky. Time to take the AP bombers up. Noting that my team's completely abandoned the left flank and is making a run for the uh, <laughs> um, for the island. <laughs> oh god. Um, anyway, so the the visor. Um, so she almost could have maybe existed if they actually completed her. Um, she starts life as the seedlets, uh, which was going initially going to be built as a light cruiser version of the Admiral Hipper class heavy cruisers, uh, however, um, what they then changed their mind to was to make her as an Admiral Hipper class heavy cruiser instead, uh, which was probably a very easy minor conversion when it came to the design, um, I have to confess. Uh, but the problem was she was 95% complete um, by the outbreak of uh, World War II, um, but instead of um, ooh, can I swing around onto this? I think I just can. But instead of completing that as a uh, heavy cruiser, uh, she got put on hold, basically, uh, unfortunately. Um, which seems intriguing, because you would have thought that Germany could have maybe done with another another heavy cruiser, but, oh well, it's uh, their decision at the end of the day. So, she went on hold, and then in 1942, someone had the great idea to think that we've just lost the Bismarck, um, in 1941, uh, what we really need is some aircraft carriers. So, projects like the Graf Zeppelin restarted, and the conversion of the Seedlitz, the 95% completed heavy cruiser, into an aircraft carrier began. And so, they started chopping her up and cutting all the superstructure off. Um, and they even started building the flight deck and things like that. Um, but the issues then came uh, with, obviously, the commitments of the war, uh, the sinking of the Shan horse, the freezing of any kind of uh, development of the uh, Kriegsmarine, the scrapping of the Gnaisenhauer, Eisenhower, um, things like that. Um, so the situation has changed, and uh, we end up in a situation where you now have a aircraft carrier, nearly completed, but not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, again, the seedlets haven't been renamed the Visor now as to be an aircraft carrier, found herself incompleted. Um, I guess Germany is very good at leaving all their jobs half baked, um, is the best way to put it. So, uh, this incomplete aircraft carrier then was later in 1944 scuttled. Uh, well, actually, no, the project stopped in 1944, I should say. She was scuttled in 1945. Um, so yeah, that's the story of the advisor or the seedlets, um, the incomplete German fantasy. Um, 
I guess, dream big and don't deliver. Uh, could be a motto for this carrier. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the, at least the aircraft are real. Uh, believe it or not, the uh, the Fiesla Fi-167s were actual aircraft. Uh, the problem was they, uh, they only ever built 14 of them in total. So, they were developed as a aircraft for the Graf Zeppelin, um, which is quite interesting. Um, and they are actually designed as carrier-borne aircraft. Um, their undercarriage could be jettisoned, even though it is fixed undercarriage. The uh, all-steel biplane design, the bottom wings, had trapped air compartments. Uh, so it means if the aircraft had to be ditched on the water, um, the the aircraft would float, uh, which is uh, quite nice. Um, however, uh, the the issue was uh, they were designed obviously for the Graf Zeppelin, and the Graf Zeppelin got put on hold. Um, so with the aircraft carrier on hold, and there was no real need for the well, further development slash manufacture of this aircraft. And therefore, even though only 14 were built, they were basically then put on hold. There was no need to build any more. Now they do have some good, lovely characteristics where they could actually land in a very short distance, almost vertically, uh, due to their very good low wind uh, airspeed handling. Um, but with no carrier, uh, no need for them. Now they did work with the Luftwaffe on the uh, Netherlands coastline. Um, they were then later sold to Croatia, uh, where Croatia then used them. Um, uh, well, they put them to good use, uh, serving as resupply aircraft for Croatian garrisons uh, which were being besieged, which is, uh, I guess, a useful um, use for them um, because of their very good low wind speed. Um, handling their ability to land and take off in short distances, it did make them quite useful for uh, getting in and out of tight spaces, I guess you could say. I mean, what was Germany going to be doing them with them anyway? So, in reality, if the visor had been completed, uh, she would have been equipped with uh, Mischer Smith Y09s and uh, Junkers Ju 88s. Uh, 87s, I should say, <laughs> not 88s. Um, so, only able to carry 20 aircraft, uh, quite a small aircraft complement, um, compressed air catapults. Uh, now she's modelled with two, but I believe she probably would have only actually had one. Um, so she wouldn't have been able to launch very large air groups, I guess you could say. Oh, uh, no, we're not going to be able to take advantage of that, so we're just going to continue with the loop round and go for the buy-in, and then we might loop back and see if we can get the... Um, the Fubuki. Now, this is one of these strange games where it seems like a lot's going on, but at the same time, not a lot's going on. Uh, might see what I might do. I'm going to go after the York, uh, not with the intention of getting a torpedo hit, but with the intention of keeping a broadside on to our battleship. If we get a torpedo hit, then obviously it's going to be advantageous. I'm going to keep it nice and short, that should do it. Yeah, it looks like some nice torpedoes. We'll go for the AP bombers now. I probably could have done some more safety drops during this game to try and conserve my aircraft, but uh, it all seems to be okay. Uh, we're going to start work moving over to the other flank. There's no point me really going after the Fubuki. I can kind of leave that to the London, I hope. So we're going to have to start working over here, see if we can work the KG-5 over. And then make sure I keep the London between me and the Fubuki. Or we could maybe go after the Fubuki. Mm, we'll go, what we'll do, we'll use these AP bombers on the KG-5, because obviously AP bombs don't do much to uh, destroy us. Um, so if I can work the KG-5 over, I've got a good potential of maybe getting this Citadel. And then I can always use um, torpedoes on the Fubuki. Now what I find with these AP bombers, you want to obviously lead quite a lot. Drop when it's about the width of the ship. And drop it quite early in the ship. Um, because I find they can take quite a while to drop. Now with AP bombs, their penetration factor obviously depends on when they're dropped. Uh, in the drop almost. Uh, the earlier you drop them, the higher the penetration of the bombs will be. 
However, obviously the larger the reticle will be. And that also means that the, you lose the accuracy of the um, of the bombs. So it's all trying to find that balance. You've got to try and balance almost penetration uh, against accuracy. You can have quite accurate AP bombs, but they're not going to get far into the ship. Uh, or you can have inaccurate bombs, which are going to get further into the ship. Um, and of course, what your aim is to do is try and get that assist out. What I think I might do in this case, um, I might do a drop on the Fubuki to keep him on his toes. So what we'll do, we'll start the drop when his AA opens. Oh, there he goes, very nice. Well, there's not going to be much left on their team. What I'll do, I'll start moving the carrier up. Always, always keep considering where you can move your carrier in order to support your team. And I will use an engine cooldown. That's one of my uh, downsides when I play carriers. I always forget about the engine cooldown. So what they got left? Obviously the Pensacola and the Normandy. And obviously their carrier, which is lingering around somewhere. So we see if we can work the Normandy over for a bit. We nearly got a full flight of our AP bombers ready, so having found the Normandy, this would be obviously advantageous. Gonna go a little bit past. Yeah, because he's backing up. There we go. Might even be able to loop this remaining aircraft round and see if we can get another one in there. Because the AA doesn't really seem to be putting up much of a show. Looks like he's stopping to go back forward, so I'm going to lead it here. There we go, and we'll uh, switch to the AP bombs. So, when it comes to carry gameplay, um, it can really depend. Um, sometimes I find you can do better in a carrier if your team loses, um, <laughs> because it means there's more for you to do against the enemy. Um, I do find sometimes find with carriers, if you're stuck on a team that's very, very good and knows what they're doing, you literally roll over the enemy team, the game's over so quickly and the enemy ships disappear so quickly that as a carrier, you're not really able to get your teeth into the, uh, into the game. They very much are a damage over time kind of class. The longer the game goes, the better, really, for a carrier. Uh, short games, or uh, games where your team's very effective, are probably some of the more difficult games. I'm not sure where the Normandy is going. Let's drop there and see what we get. Now oh, we've got a sister, okay. It seems like the joys of the autopilot have kicked in. Uh, sometimes I find if there's an island within the uh, grid square that you want your aircraft carrier to go, uh, your aircraft carrier just cannot resist and will have to try and beach itself. Dropping nice and early there, hoping for some citadels and being rewarded with such. And as you're pretty much seeing, the anti-aircraft of the Normandy is not really much of a concern. At the moment what you're seeing is there's not a lot of flat clouds and the reason being is I'm quite close to the ship, uh, therefore um, it's not, not really inside that range of the flat clouds. Uh, we will do some torpedo aircraft, launch some fighters here and we ought to find ourselves into another grid square if we can. So we'll, uh, we'll do that to get moving. We might make a run on the... Uh, I mean, it would be nice to wrap up the Normandy for my team, but at the same time, I think maybe I ought to go for the Pensacola. She's potentially the biggest threat to me. And also with the amount of time left in the game. So we'll do a drop on the Pensacola. And then what we might do, we might just do an engine cooldown. See if we can boom and zoom onto the Normandy. 20 seconds of the game. We're not going to get a double strike, obviously, due to the amount of time between uh, everything. Uh, 
Get that reticle close in. Now remember that the way the torpedoes go, you'll end up with one to the left and one to the right. Well, that's as much as I think we can really do in the carrier without um, having to uh, go after their carrier. So, can't really complain about that. Um, it's nice to have a game which actually dragged out. I've had quite a few games which end very quickly. Let's see how we did there. We managed to do 89,000 damage with 11 torpedoes and 13 bomb hits, getting 4 citadels, 3 flooding, 3 kills, 3 incapacitations. Managed to detect um, 10, air, 12, 10 ships, um, which is hopefully helpful to the team. Coming second on the team, can't complain about that. The, uh, the London doing very well as well. Uh, enemy team, yeah, the KG-5, the Fubuki, the Fubuki on our flank, yeah, no, that seems fair, that seems fair. Managed to walk away with 209,000 credits after a ship service cost of 35,000 credits. Obviously, that does include a premium account, obviously, buffing that up. But um, all in all, the Tier 5, I find it can be very hit and miss, depending on the game. Sometimes it can be very good, uh, but you kind of have to have like an average to like a rubbish team uh, whereas sometimes I find it can be quite bad if you end up with a very good kick team because you just can't get your teeth into it um, but this game has managed to be a nice average I'd like say like it's a nice average game uh, being able to get my teeth into it and support the team without either side really feeling like they're rolling over each other which has been quite nice I wish we could get more games like this um, set these days well I hope you have enjoyed this as always down in the description will be the modules and the commander build also the uh, email address for the channel if you want to send any of your own game catchers for the community spotlight video and the uh, link to patreon if you want to support the channel patreon as it is a non-monetized channel i'd say thank you to the subscribers and thank you to the patrons until next time i'm the gaff major and back to the port hey hey clear the wave here comes the galloping major Here comes the galloping man.